I'm still chipping away at Elden Ring. It is easily my game of the year. I just can't say enough good things about how fun it is and just how rewarding it is. Really just from a gear drop perspective, uh, constantly finding new things and new areas in the map. And it's really interesting to me how every area of the map is so distinct from others. How much love and care and lore is baked into every single instance. It's so mind-blowing to me because I think of the scale of what Dark Souls was and Dark Souls 2 and 3 and how I felt those games over time progressed with larger and larger areas to explore larger, more encompassing, sweeping narratives. Everything felt like it had a purpose and a place, but it was still kind of all one story, right? And by that, I mean, even though you had distinct zones, the way everything kind of connected to each other, while each area did have its own unique identity, it never really felt like a true open world because it wasn't, right? It was a very linear experience with some branching paths, of course, here and there, and the joy of seeing something and then, you know, finding about it again 10, 15 hours later in gameplay or, you know, kicking down the, uh, the proverbial ladder to climb up to another place that was like, oh, wow, I was here at the beginning of the game and now Endgame is like right where I started. Sure, very clever level design, no doubt about it, but never really got that sense to me that everything was distinctly different. And I think From Software has really outdone themselves this time, really, truly, with Elden Ring, because it feels like a true universe. And I really feel like as I go from area to area and dungeon to dungeon, they all feel so distinctly different. They have radically different challenges involved with them. Yes, they all revolve around combat, of course. But the way the levels look, the way that you feel by hearing certain types of music, and the way the enemies are designed, how they fight, what they wear, the gear they drop, all really tells a very distinct story from each area, and I really like that. That is just so mind-blowing to me that they've been able to pull this off. And I suspect a lot of people feel this way too. You know, um, oh, I don't know. I'm 80 plus hours into the game by now. I recorded this footage sometime last week. Um, and I, I was just, I get another new area. Just let's go see what this new area contains. And oh, there's something here. Let's go figure out what it is. There's a story to be told in this little instance. And this is by no means a small area. But it was rewarding enough that going through and fighting through this boss and collecting items and stuff, by the very end, at the very top of the cathedral, the very final item you get really made it worthwhile. And I was like, that's awesome. That's really, really cool. I really like that they've been able to implement that. My one criticism, though, and I've, I've started to notice something consistently in my playthrough of Elden Ring, I feel like a lot of times I don't know where the heck I am supposed to be going. Sure, I can go anywhere. I can go to the end boss, I think. I think I have the things I need to do it. I'm not really sure where that is yet. Um, I mean, everybody's like, hey, go do this now. I'm like, cool, wh where is that again? And they're naming places. Oh, it's just east of this town or north of this castle. And I don't know what they're talking about. So. I'm just chipping away at my own pace. But a lot of times I find that I'm picking up unique items that have a very distinct description to them. They're key items in the game. They're actually in the key items tab. In other words, they are items that have been flagged that cannot be sold. They cannot be equipped. There is something you give to somebody. The problem is I'm not really running into a lot of these NPCs and I feel like I am missing some of their stories. Now, that's not to say that the stories that I have kind of crafted in my own head about each of these dungeons are any less meaningful. But I wonder if some people are turned off to Elden Ring because it's not a true narrative in the sense that everybody's going to go through, do the same missions, have the same story beat, and get to the end the same way. That's something I personally champion and I'm very excited about. But I could totally understand somebody like Brent who is very, he likes structure and he wants quests and give me the story, let me work my way through, tell me what's going on. I don't really get that experience here with Elden Ring and I can't tell you the number of NPCs that I've stumbled across 
that asked me to do something and I've either done it out of order so I negate their quest or I beat a boss before I get a summon or something or they move on to another place in the map and I have yet to find them again. That's not to say that I might just keep going farther east and suddenly I'll stumble across 15 or so NPCs. What I'm saying is that the game is so dense that there's a lot of these experiences that I just flat out miss out on entirely and it's kind of disappointing. Um, I guess this is probably the design strategy where they say, okay, we're gonna implement 30, and I'm making up a number here because I don't know the count. We're gonna make up 30 NPC quests and some of them you're gonna find right away because we're gonna basically handhold them and show you immediately there's gonna be a cutscene that's unavoidable. It's gonna be a part of the map that you are naturally driven to, a natural funnel, a choke point, something. Okay, we're gonna make a bunch of those, but the reality is most people are gonna miss 85% of the other ones. We just got to make sure the few experiences they do have somehow are meaningful enough to keep them engaged. Now, I'm engaged solely by the combat and the exploration in this game. And while Skyrim it never painted a grand narrative uh, in between each of the little dungeons, they were all fun and rewarding in their own way. And I cleared that game six, seven times. I lost count how many times I bought Skyrim. Um, I cleared that game numerous times because it was so much fun to play it with different characters and different play styles. But the story itself, you know, going into those dungeons and reading the journals and piecing together what happened, that was me putting a lot of my own imagination to things partially, but never really this long narrative dialogue of an NPC that you befriend who was wronged and you as the hero are going to write the quest or fix or do whatever needs to be done. And I think that's where I think Elden Ring suffers the most, if I had to say any one place that I was like, oh, I don't know. But then the alternative is what? what? What is the solution to this? You give us a beautiful open world to explore with tons of stuff to do, tons of enemies, tons of biomes, just, I'm not saying millions, but many side dungeons that all are dense in of their own right, that have their own sets of challenges, that have their own mini bosses and rewards and everything. Um, if you started putting quest markers on the world and said, go here, you know, the Skyrim method, the secret item you need to find is right here and there's a big arrow pointing to it that basically forces you exactly to where you need to be. Um, would that be fun? I mean, yes, I guess that's a way that From Software could potentially guarantee you're gonna get to see their content because there's gonna be a list of here's the 30 NPCs you need to meet in order to beat the game and here's where to find them, I don't know. But what I do know is that, you know, maybe that is not as fun for some people and maybe the exploration is where it's at. Although most of the people that I've talked to that do play Elden Ring as much as I, or more than me, because I was a little late to getting into the game, um, a lot of people are constantly reliant on the wiki. And I have said in other reviews that I've done for this game, the fascinating thing to me is just how many times I have to pull out my phone because I don't know I'll find a key item where I'm like, oh, I want that armor or, oh, I want that sword. And it's part of a seven or eight quest chain that I would have never found on my own, ever. Things that I entirely missed, even from the very beginning of the game, finding patches for the very first time. Maybe a lot of people stumble on him and the game designers thought, oh, this is an easy fix. Everybody's going to find patches. I sure didn't. I didn't even know he was there. Um, I didn't find patches until almost 35 hours into the game. So every experience is different and I guess it's just something to ponder, but you know, despite all of that, for just the very few uh, NPCs that I have gotten to find, some of the, uh, you know, the, the people that I have encountered, the, the, the voice acting and their stories and what they're saying and watching them kind of go through a quest to fruition and help them out is awesome. It's really, really rewarding. And maybe that is the From Software of way. We're gonna throw in a bunch of stuff and you're gonna find one or 2% of it, but it's gonna be mind blowing one or 2% that's gonna really make up for the fact that you missed 98 or 99% of the rest of the game. I'm not really sure, but I guess I'll close out with this. I wanted to do an update on Elden Ring because it is a very special game. And I think it's one of those games that doesn't come by very often. Um, obviously very biased for me personally to um, other from software titles with you know Bloodborne and Dark Souls and 
how masterclass those games are. But I think everybody saw what Elden Ring's trailer was and wanted to believe that it was as good as we thought. And thankfully, they were right. And this game is legitimately awesome. And I couldn't help but just send yet another love letter, despite some of the criticisms I may have, another love letter to this game because it's just so darn good. And with that, I'm going to get back to Elden Ring, believe it or not, and I'll have another video for you guys, again, another day or two on some other thoughts. But for now, I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.